In this lesson, we are going to take a look at Modo 701. And I want to take you guys through some of the interface um, and some of the basics first before moving on to some tools in the next lesson. Okay, so let's talk about interface first. Modo uh, in the model configuration, and there is some other configurations, um, is set up uh, standard as a big perspective view. Uh, you get your tools on the side here, basic deform, mesh edit, vertex edge, polygon, UV. And then um, we've got our selection up here, vertices, edges, polygons, and you can select a material or items. Uh, we've got some options up here, which I will discuss in a bit. And then here we got our item list and the properties per, per mesh item. And you got our your scene up here, and if you open a new scene, it will just open down here. You can have multiple scenes in the same uh, file, which is interesting. Okay, so um, first things first, um, I have set my uh, under here and preferences remapping. Um, I have set my um, mouse to Maya navigation only because I am very much used to Maya but there's other ones you can do or you can just leave it on Modo. I just didn't want to have too many navigation um, ways they're always sort of the same with alt and mouse and well anyway I like the Maya one so I kept that one um, alright so what is next so we got um, let me delete this one uh, so we got a grayed out mesh thing here that's how you start uh, so if we select a cube and we drag it on the viewport, drag it out, and then it will fill that mesh item. You can see it's no longer grayed out. One of the things uh, that Modo does different than Maya is that if in Maya we would create a cylinder, or what is this, uh, <laughs> um, a sphere, and you drag it out and you create your sphere, it would be a new mesh item, but in Modo uh, they belong into the same mesh item and they translate together. They're basically one object, even though they're not connected. If we would like to separate them, you can um, cut this with Ctrl X like you normally use in Windows as well. And you press N, creates a new mesh item, Ctrl V for paste. And we can name this one sphere if you like. And this one cube. And now they you can turn off the sphere on and they're basically not connected there in their own uh, mesh item. And you can then with Ctrl G group mesh items again. So hope that makes it a bit clear. It's a bit different, uh, but it works fine. Okay, let's undo all that. And uh, let's talk about some of the basic tools. So uh, with our mesh item selected and our uh, action center set to automatic, I'll talk to about action center in a minute. We can do center selected all, which basically centers it on the current grid. Uh, and we've got our manipulators here, but we can also use the same as in Maya, W for move. Um, and we have some handles here which move just in a plane, which is quite nice. And this one is just free move, sort of the same as we are used to. Um, and we got E for rotate, also pretty self explanatory. And R for scale. Oh, so the thing is uh, in Modo, you can move your pivots, uh, and they're called action center. So let's talk about that next, the action centers. There is a couple of different, um, or quite a few different um, action centers you can set, selection border. So let's say that um, we select this one and automatic would just center it, selection would center it, but um, it takes the local, um, the local axis if that makes sense. And um, well, there's basically elements goes back to your mesh item, uh, origin. Well, it's always at the origin. Uh, you can do pivots. So you have to experiment with these. Um, 
usually I would use automatic or selection and sometimes selection um, center auto axis. All right, so as you can see, that works like that. Um, that is all pretty clear, I think. Um, you can select, press one, select vertices. I need to select vertices, uh, view. It is standard back face calling, as you can see. But if we press control two, and we get all our uh, view uh, or shading options for us, they're also up here. I'm going to wireframe. And now I can just um, select through the, through the model, which is nice. Uh, so control two, go back to shaded. There we are. Uh, then we have symmetry. So if we set it to X and we select some, um, and that's interesting. Let's see. Oh, did we set it to Y? X and oh, this should work, but it might be, it needs to be completely centered uh, for it to work. Um, so center selected all, oh, it seems to be selected. Uh, symmetry X and select some. There we go. So as you can see, our action center changes the way we can uh, scale. So that is symmetry, turn that off. And then we have fall off, um, which allows us to, if we would uh, just uh, correct the face here and we do B for bevel and we so if I extrude it. Now, if we would take the whole thing and we wanted to scale it down, um, but scale it down so this one goes way, well, we get a nice uh, fall off, basically. Uh, we can do a linear fall off, and which shows you that the most is happening here, as you can see, and then everything happens accordingly. Um, and you can set your fall off as you can see and there is actually quite a few of those so again i'm not using them too many and too um, many times in this tutorial but it's uh, nice to know they're there okay oh, oh. well i uh, did something weird there okay let's delete it <laughs> and and finally uh we have well not finally we got two more things to talk about. We got snapping. So if we create um, a cube and we would like to snap some vertices together, we can turn on snapping and um, take, set the anxious center to selection center auto axis. Press and it snaps. Now, in order to set what you snap to, you press F11. And then you can set it to grid, pivot, geometry, vertex, edge, polygon. For this, we set it to uh, geometry. And then in mode, we set it to vertex. Um, so, yeah. Hope that makes sense. Uh, you can turn snapping on and off with X. Or if you if keep X pressed and then l let it go, it should. Well, X on, X off. Okay. Then another thing. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about in this lesson is the work plane. Uh, you can see the work plane here in the background. It's like this grid, which sort of keeps changing. Uh, I don't know if you can sort of see that, but it, it keeps, um, you know, reorienting itself. And when I started out, I thought that was really annoying, but now it makes sense. <laughs> so let's say we take this face and we rotate it. And then we want to make something which has the same orientation. We can take work plane. Align work plane to selection, and as you can see, the work plane aligns itself to this face, which is nice. So if we do top, our top view is now aligned with this face. Um, so if we create a cylinder here, um, and we go back to perspective, they are exactly aligned. Uh, and that is really, really handy, believe me. And then we can just turn the work plane, uh, reset work plane. And we got this uh, nice cylinder aligned to this plane.